Hello, this is John Spielman with <coughs> excuse me, my video version of column 139, which is now not an agony column as we know, but just a column of really whatever I want to do. But um supposed to be faintly instructional maybe or whatever. I'm just gonna check that we are recording, because if we're not, then that would have been a disaster. And it was, and I'm sorry about the uh infinite regression on the screen for a moment. So I've this week. I, basically, I'm talking about beautiful moves, interesting moves, and I started with some helpmates, and I explained that um, a while ago, um, I a few weeks ago, Luke McShane sent me a helpmate and an address for a helpmate analyzer. This is the helpmate analyzer. I've put the address in the column, and this is my history of what I've been looking at. I've been recently trying to do things where you go queen from this corner to this corner to this corner to give mate. I haven't managed yet. Anyway, um, and I made some helpmates. Um, he first sent me one and then I had an idea and I got it to work. And this is a process that once upon a time would have taken weeks because you'd have to try to check that the bloody thing was sound. But now you are software, you trust the software. This is for a front end, a graphical front end for something called Popeye, uh, which is a problem solving software and problem checking software. And with the help of this, I was able to create first a sound help making three with an idea I wanted to create. And then Luke actually improved it and then later I did a couple of other versions as well. Slightly different versions of the same sort of thing. Well, different versions, but the same sort of thing. So I'm going to start um, with um, this one, which is Helpmate in 3. Perhaps I should actually show them. I guess you may have looked at them on the screen. Um, this is the first one on the left with two knights and the two pawns and the two kings. Luke McShane, helpmate in three, usually, sorry, written as H, sorry, there's an S there, isn't it, which we might as well correct. Uh, usually. Can't spell as you all know by now. And um, so there are two solutions. One is the main solution, and the other is a solution where white moves first, which is called set play. And I'll show it to you in the database, which is here. And so the first one goes to... I've got this the wrong way around, haven't I? Why is this... This is the wrong way around in here. It should be like this. And I'm sorry about that. Um, that's not good. Um, it should be like this, and it's e5, king e2, king e4, knight e6, d5, knight to their mate. Which is pretty. Pretty mate with two knights and two pawns blocking the squares. And then the set play. Let's see if the f11 button will deign to work. Is now king d3, d6, knight e7, e6, knight e7, mate. So that's actually one rank further back, and it's uh, there we are. It's um, a um, it's a nice nice little helpmate in three which Luke sent me, and I took a little while to do it. I'm not very quick at these things. I'm reasonably quick normally, but not as quick as John Nunn or Jonathan Mestel, who have both been former world problem solving champions, as I mentioned. And then I had my idea. And I wanted to set up a thematic idea, and this was my first version, actually, the one on the top right, which um, I sent to Luke. Um, and here we are. You can see the solution. It's actually now, is this, this actually, again, should be this way around. Um, 
though I think it might work the other way around as well. I, I started actually with the pawn on g4, but when I had it in g4, then it could advance to g5 and g6, and there were lots and lots of of um, cooks. So, for instance, you could play. This was going forward. This was, you could go. B uh, B five G five C five Queen takes knight almost anything Queen H seven mate for instance, so that that would not work. Well, this one is sound as the software told me, and it goes like this. So it's setting up a battery, and Luke, I didn't like this version very much because. There are so many pieces. There are the three pieces in the second rank which you need to stop various cooks and the rook and the pawn. And Luke sent me a new version later. It's the same idea. I'm not sure if F11 is going to work. So I've said JS and Luke. It could be Luke and JS. And this is also this way around. It should be I don't know why all these diagrams are the wrong way around. And this one goes... And um, I'm looking in my article. Have I got these diagrams all the wrong way around? I, I hope, I think I may have. Wait a minute. Are these diagrams the right way around? Looks like... I'm confused now. That's the right way around. Um, I'll, I'll check and I will sort it out later because that's no good, obviously, having the diagrams the wrong way around in the article. And um, that was this. And then Luke, when he put it in the software, he found a um, cook, which goes like this. King to their, queen takes queen, king to their takes, king to their, queen to their mate. And it took John about 15 minutes, and he said, is there any connection? And there's not. And basically, aesthetically speaking, it would be much better if um, if you're going to have two versions, if they are linked. And so it's probably better. Luke also pointed out to me that there's another version in which um, the knight's an h2. So this is, um, wait a minute, bishop c1, so it's actually this way around, yeah, bishop c8, c1, knight g4, bishop there, there, and there's only one solution there. And although you've lost, lost quite a nice thing, um, you have, in fact, um, probably improved the, improved the problem from that from the from the aesthetic viewpoint, from the composer's viewpoint, and then I've got another one, which which is this one. This is the right way around this board. This is another one where you set up a battery, and it goes like this. And again, it's sound, and you need all of these four pawns in order to. Sorry, you need all of these pawns in order to. Um, make it sound. I'm not going to save it again because, for instance, if we went into this thing here and we went into the history and we removed this pawn, for instance, and asked, then I think there's a mate where you go queen d1, queen d5, queen d1, queen takes pawn, and rook b6 mate. So it goes ping and it gives me e5, queen d1, king f7, queen takes pawn with check, king f6, rook b6 mate. And there are a million of those. So we can lose that in the history. And um, the, the, there are other reasons you need all the pawns. So you can play with this. I recommend playing with it if you like this sort of thing. And you can have a lot of fun. Right, now, I then... Going on from this, I wanted to go to some interesting moves in games. And I looked at Tim Crabber's page, which I've um, also bookmarked, I think. Um, what is the bookmark? Let's have a look. 
and um, um, do, 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 where is it? Um, Tim Crabber. HTTPS, you can see it's in the article, and if you look at it, um, it looks like this. We'll put it in. So, um, there we are, the 10 best. His most amazing, I'm not sure it's so amazing, is Averbach, Spassky, Leningrad, 1956, of course it was still Leningrad, where Spassky gave up a whole piece just to fight. And I'm going to show you that game now and talk about it. Um, so, and the reason I did this also was I found a fantastic move, which we'll come to later. So that, so this is Averbach, uh, Spassky is black, and things go really wrong in the opening. It's King's Indian, Averbach plays his system. It's, at this stage, very early on in the system. Um... And he goes e5, which is probably not a great idea at all. e6 is a better move. And Averbach managed to get complete control of the white squares, which was really a pretty much a catastrophe for Spassky. That's very important. Getting rid of the white squared bishops, very important move. So they got to this position. And I said, the, the opening has gone appallingly for black and Spassky had plenty of time to think and remember they play, used to play 40 moves in two and a half hours in, that, in those days um, he'd convinced himself that if he played normally then he was going to lose that the guy was going to kill him and he had this idea this crazy idea and he played it he played knight c6 just giving a piece up just to get the d4 square for his knight a pawn on c6 covering d5 and the b file and Spassky and Averbach apparently thought for 55 minutes here. He ought to have snorted. And then, I guess he looked for an even better way to win. But you're not going to win very easily if the knight gets to d4, are you? So why wouldn't you just take it? I mean, you're going to have to take it. It was such a shock that, in fact, Averbach thought for ages. Mark Taimanov said he'd rather have resigned than played knight c6. Which is a purist idea, but I'm not sure. But knight c6 is just a great move of a great world champion, or future world champion, who realised he totally messed the opening up and needed to make some trouble. And he did. And Spassky said, why not just h6, and just... Then, you, then your two pieces up is white, because the bishop has to go to h8 and it can't get out. And then you just start playing chess, and eventually you'll win. And I agree. I mean, I think that's very true, and it would have been a pretty sensible thing to do. What actually happened is very remarkable. Um, there was... I mean, OK, of course it's winning for a long time. He took. And actually this is... had to play for complications and hoped that Averbach would go wrong. So even though, and I've misspelled though, and I suppose I... in my... Uh, even though this loses, it was the right thing to do. One thing I would say to people, and I keep on saying this, is that chess is a battle, and that sometimes you have to you have to bluff, even if you know you're bluffing. And there is a win here that's not easy to see. Rook h8, f3. If you don't play f3, you're just lost. And now the only move is knight f4. And white is winning. So, I mean, white's a piece up for nothing very much. And is going to win the game without too much trouble. So, um, not such an easy thing. Um, easy to mess it up. But, of course, white, white is winning this position if he sees it. And then you would just go ping and do it. He actually got to a position of sorts. And in the ending, he just started playing chess. He said, all right, we've got nothing to lose. I'll play some moves. And somewhere, somewhere around about here it started to be unclear. I don't know when it really got unclear. I haven't analysed it that carefully. I know that King C1, the engine still thinks is winning. That's a really, really difficult this. But it went like this. 
and now apparently black is active enough. And he actually managed to win some material here, which is rather splendid. Uh, now he could have taken, he could actually have taken here. And wins, wins the pawn with a winning position. So, well, um, what can you say? Um, so now, now Avenbach's fighting for his life, but at least he's probably angry and calm rather than neurotic. And I don't know what the relations are like. They're, they're still both alive, of course. These guys, Avenbach's the world's oldest grandmaster. Um, and Spassky's in Moscow now, I think, because he's been ill. Well, they got to this position, and I don't know, I haven't looked very carefully. What I do know is that eventually, e6 was a good move. I think that's exclaim. I don't know if that's the only move. I, I know I checked it wasn't. I checked with, an, with a table base here, because it's a six-piece ending. And the thing is now you can go bishop to b4 to c5 and you can draw the game. So um, Spassky agreed to draw. And what I don't know is whether maybe he was slightly embarrassed that he was actually winning this. I have no idea. If they had good relations, you might think, well, I'm really pleased I've drawn the game, but it's a bit much I'm winning it. Even though they're monstrous warriors, sometimes, um, you know, you feel... You can feel for your opponent to some extent, depending on your sensibility. Anyway, that was that game. And the next one is a game I was looking with a pupil, and we were looking at the Catalan, and for some reason I looked at A4 for a bit, very desultory sort of way. We weren't really analysing properly. I was saying this is the main line, which sort of talking in very general terms, and I was just playing... I just looked for gains between strong players and came across this one and was saying, oh well, I don't know if A5 is going to It's a blitz game, this, but it's going to, at one moment it's going to explode. I thought, yeah, Brook C5 is slightly wrong. I think Bishop B4 is a better move. Because if you play what you really want to play, then it turns out that in this position um, you're in trouble. I don't know if you can go back the other way with the Rook. I haven't analysed very carefully. You can go Rook A8 or something. You can always go King G7 if you want to. And um, it turns out that in this position the tactics are good. This is just a good position for Black. Black has a clear advantage here, because the A pawn's weak. So, I mean, that's it doesn't matter very much. What happened was that they played this position. He's got his knight to a great square. Nakamura now played bishop b7, and MVL eventually won. So it went... Sorry, I've actually... This, this note should actually go here, shouldn't it? So we will do that. Right, so this note should go here. And, I mean, the actual game went like this. By now, MBL's got a big advantage, obviously, huge white squares. And that was that. And it says Nakamura, doesn't it, which is not good. Either. So you're having a lot of me faffing, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, the thing that was interesting was that while I was doing this, I happened to look at F5. I just thought, what about F5? And somewhere around about here... The engine suddenly went ping in the strongest possible terms with this variation. Amazing variation. So you reach this position, 
And the, the natural moves a queen e5 check. Well, it loses a knight, or maybe bishop to bishop f6, or maybe um, knight f5 check looks natural. And I've shown this to people, and some people see it, some don't, but okay, so let's look at the possible moves. Knight f5 takes d6, queen c6 check, queen f3. Bishop takes, I don't know why, particularly why we're getting check. Because even if king h2, what's happening if king h2? I'm guessing that in this position we play rook c1, do we? No, sorry, the what, rubbish, sorry, sorry, I'm having a complete, um, that isn't even, so queen, queen checks, Let, let's kick that variation, um, let's remove, delete variation, I'm just having a, having a brainstorm, and basically this is good, there's d6, which isn't a bad move, comes to the same thing, there's queen e5 check, bishop f6, queen e6 takes, rook takes, rook d4 is apparently very good. And there's rook takes, queen takes d6, which is a plausible one. And now you mustn't play rook takes queen, because if pawn takes queen, and then you then you get the rook back. And this, well, maybe black's a bit better here, but it's, it's a game anyway. But you actually go queen e4 check, exclam... And this should be winning. He's winning. So there are all these lines, but the fantastic move in this position, the glorious move, which the engine spits out, is knight g8. And is a and that's a really difficult move to see because it's to an empty square. I mean, moves to non sacrifices in empty squares are much harder to see than sacrifices in squares you control. And taking, I think, is best. Rook takes f4, takes, takes, takes. Rook e8, takes, takes, is, should be okay for white. So queen h6, bishop f6, I think bishop f8 comes to the same thing. Check bishop g7, d6. And actually I stopped here. Um, you've got two uh, two pawns, for the piece. Obviously got many threats. I think the engine says it's about equal, but... In a blitz game, it could easily go either way, of course. And the important thing is that this fantastic move, knight, H, knight g8, has completely changed the course of the game. So, um, just rather a wonderful move. So occasionally, I mean this was an analysis, but occasionally people play really wonderful moves. So I recommend Tim Crabbe's page to you again which is this page, and he's got all, all the top 100. It was 20 years ago, but there's still some fantastic moves. There's Bishop H3 by Shirov against Apala. It was a famous move, giving up a whole opposite bishop just to, to gain a tempo and, a, and an ending, saying it's more important to have the tempo than to have the bishop. That's a rather fantastic move. And there are other ones. Here, here's whatever it is Marshall it looks like. Levitsky Marshall, the famous game where he played Queen G3. Um, here. Here we are. Oh, it looks like this isn't an interactive board. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in a fortnight. I mean, the, this column is for the first Sunday of the month, and then a fortnight later, so I should be back on the 21st. Okay, I'm just going to check we're still recording, and we are, and we're starting.